الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا أحييكم بتحية الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نقرأ اليوم معا إن شاء الله حديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لو تابعني عشرة من اليهود لم يبقى على ظهرها يهودي إلا أسلم لو تابعني عشرة من اليهود لم يبقى على ظهرها يهودي إلا أسلم نعم So after praising Allah and sending the salat wa salam upon his messenger uh, the Sheikh greeted you brothers with the greetings of Islam and he said we will begin by reading this hadith this hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu in which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, which means that if I was followed by 10 of the Yahud, there would not be from among them upon the earth any Yahudi except that he entered into Islam. So to repeat the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, which means if 10 of the Yahud followed me, then there would not remain upon the earth any of them except that they would have entered into Islam. وعند شرحنا وبياننا لهذا الحديث نعرف بأن التقليد الأعمى نهج اليهود مع أحبارهم وكبرائهم فهم أهل تقليد أعمى فيسمع بلا عقل ولا دليل وإنما التقليد لما يقوله الأحبار وهذا سبب عدم إيمان اليهود وإن كان هناك من آمن بهم بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ولكن جلهم لم يؤمن بالنبي بسبب نهج ومنهج التقليد وهو منهج يعطل الحق ويبعد الإنسان عن معرفته أي معرفة الحق نعم نعم so what we benefit from this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the methodology of the Yahud in their blind following in their blind following of the rabbis so they would follow the rabbis in whatever the rabbis would declare or decree or follow the guidance of the rabbis without following the truth. And no doubt, some of them uh, entered into Islam during the life of the Prophet وسلم, But overall, what we see from this hadith is this methodology of blind following of the rabbis. No. وهنا تحديد من النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لكبرائهم العشرة من الأحبار منعوا هؤلاء من الدخول بالإيمان بالله تعالى وبتوحيده بسبب التقليد ولذلك قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لهرقل ملك الروم في رسالته فإن توليت فإن عليك 
إثم الأريسيين وهم أتباعه وهنا أيضا يقع الإثم على هؤلاء العشرة لأنهم ارتضوا هذا النهج وهو نهج التقليد والواجب على المسلم محاربة هذا النهج فليس في الإسلام بابوية فليس في الإسلام بابوية وإنما الإسلام قائم على الاتباع قال تعالى والسابقون الأولون من المهاجرين والأنصار والذين اتبعوهم بإحسان رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه نعم So these ten these ten these were in explaining this hadith these ten were the more senior rabbis the more senior rabbis that they made it um, which was they made it pleasing to themselves that the others would blind follow them would follow them blindly and no doubt if somebody has this methodology that they are calling the people to blind follow them then this is something blameworthy this is something blameworthy likewise how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wrote to hirakal hirakal who was the ruler of rome at that time when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wrote his letter to him he included in the letter and if you refuse and turn away then indeed upon you is the ithm or the the blame or the sin of the arisiin and the arisiin these were the followers of hirakal so because of hirakal turning away from the truth and not accepting it then upon him would be the blame likewise of all of his followers for not following the truth because of their blind following of him uh, so no doubt what is upon the muslim is that we are against this methodology and that we are against the muslims following this ideology or this methodology of blind following those among them without returning back to the proofs and return without returning back to what the texts indicate that we must must follow and allah said in the quran uh, praising the companions radiyallahu anhum and those who follow them he said subhanahu wa ta'ala which means that the first and foremost from the muhajirin and the ansar and those who follow them bil ihsan upon goodness and correctly that allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him now wa huna athar azim ibn mas'ud radiyallahu anhu qala fihi la yakunu ahadukum imma qalu وَمَا الْإِمَّعَةِ يَا أَبَا عَبْدِ الرَّحْمَانِ قَالْ يَقُولْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا مَعَ النَّاسِ إِنَّمَا أَنَا مَعَ النَّاسِ إِنْ اهْتَدَوْا اهْتَدَيْتْ وَإِنْ ضَلُّوا ضَلَلْتْ أَلَا يُطَوِّ أَلَا يُوَطِّنْ أَنْ يُهَيِّئْ أَحَدَكُمْ نَفْسَهِ على إن إن كفر الناس أن لا يكفر. نعم. So we'll read this great author, this tremendous author, this narration from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه, the noble companion of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, who said, "None of you should be an imai," and this word imai, this is somebody that is a blind follower that simply follows the people without care for what is actually the truth so they said meaning the 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 other people said to abdullah bin masud when he said don't any of you be am i so they said and who is the am i or what is an am i oh abu abdurrahman 
So Ibn Masood Abu Abdurrahman, he replied, the MI is the one who says, I'm with the people. If the people are guided, then I'll be guided with them. And if the people go astray, I'll go astray with them. And then it, Abu Abdurrahman, Abdullah bin Masood continued by saying, shouldn't one of you prepare yourself or shouldn't you prepare yourself that if the people disbelieve that you would not disbelieve? So in this end sentence, he is refuting the way and the methodology of the MI by saying that shouldn't you prepare yourself that if the people are going to disbelieve that you would prepare yourself to not disbelieve, meaning rather than blind following them in their disbelief. Now. وقال الخلال أخبرني حرب بن إسماعيل الكرماني قال قلت لإسحاق بن راهوي ما معنى قوله أي قول ابن مسعود لا يكون أحدكم إما قال ابن راهوي قال يقول إن ضل الناس ضللت وإن اهتدوا اهتديت نعم So Al-Khalal Rahimahullah who is one of the great scholars one of the students of the students of Imam Ahmad Rahimahullah he said أخبرني حرب Ibn Ismail al-Kirmani. And Harb ibn Ismail al-Kirmani, he was one of the famous students of Imam Ahmad and Ishaq ibn Rahwaya. So he said, meaning Harb ibn Ismail al-Kirmani, he said, I said to Ishaq, what is the meaning of Abdullah ibn Masood's statement? Don't any of you be imai? So Ishaq, Rahim Allah, he replied, if the people go astray, then I'll go astray. And if the people are guided, then I'll be guided. No. وَقَالَ إِبْنُ الْقَيِّمْ وَكَانُوا يُسَمُّونَ أَيِ السَّلَفْ رَحِمُهُمُ اللَّهِ الْمُقَلِّدْ الْإِمَّعَةِ ومحقب دينه أي تابع لهم في دينه كما قال ابن مسعود وكانوا يسمونه الأعمى الذي لا بصيرة له فالمقلد أعمى والمسلم لا يرتضي لنفسه أن يكون أعمى العقل أعمى الاتباع للدليل فهذا خروج عن التكليف وهذا سبيل إلى الانحراف والانقياد إلى مخالفة الشرع والأديان الوضعية التي وضعت من الناس دائما تركز على نهج التقليد ونهج الاتباع الاتباع أو التقليد الأعمى وهنا المفارقة بين نهج المسلم عن الأديان الوضعية وهو فرقان مبين والتقليد هو نهج اليهود والعياذ بالله So Ibn al-Qayyim رحمه الله he said that the Salaf used to call the blind follower Im'ai and somebody that left his religion only to following others without the proofs. Just as Ibn Masood said, radiallahu anhu, that the MI is the one who uh, completely 
follows his religion based upon the people, based upon other men. And they used to call the uh, they used to call this person, meaning the Salaf, they used to call this kind of person that blindly followed other people in their religion. They used to say that he is a'ma, that he is blind. So therefore, the Muslim should not be pleased with this for himself. The Muslim should not follow the people without reference to the proofs and be pleased with being blind in his intellect. He should not be pleased with being intellectually blind to following the proofs. And this is something that we find from the methodology and the ways of the innovative Islamic political groups and parties that they call their people to blind following and not giving precedence to following the proofs. So this is something that the innovative Islamic political groups and parties are doing and that they call to. So the Muslim needs to protect themselves from this and remember that that methodology of blind following was from the ways of the Yahud and Allah's refuge is sought. So the Muslim yajib an yabdhul al-asbab li ma'rifat al-haq min badli al-juhdi fi ma'rifat al-dalil min al-kitab wa al-sunna ala fahm al-sahabat al-kiram. هذا الفعل فيه بذل الأسباب فالأنبياء معجزاتهم كانت ممكن أن تكون بلا أسباب ولكن شاء الله جل وعلا أن يجعل هذه المعجز المعجزات يبذل لها السبب فالله عز وجل قال لموسى اضرب بعصاك البحر هنا اضرب سبب لانشقاق البحر والله قادر على أن يقول كن فيكون للشيء ولكن طلب من نبي الله موسى أن يضرب بالعصا وطلب من عيسى أن أدخل يدك في جيبك بذل سبب والله عز وجل من أمره أن يبذل العبد السبب اصنع الفلك صناعة المركب بذل سبب إذا إذا وجدنا أن إذا رأينا عفوا كل المعجزات الله يطلب بذل السبب وكذلك المسلم يجب عليه أن يبذل السبب وهو الاتباع ومعرفة الدليل لمعرفة الحق. واضح؟ نعم. No. So the, it's upon the Muslim that they strive to follow the correct methodology of learning the proofs so that they can act upon and follow the proofs. And in order to understand the proofs correctly that they have learned, they need to refer back to the understanding of the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what they had agreed upon. And this is from the asbab. This is from the means that the Muslim needs to undertake for themselves in order to be upon the truth. They cannot uh, expect that the truth will come to them without uh, striving to put any effort and implementing any means. Rather, if a Muslim wants to be upon the truth and they want to understand the revelation of Allah, then they need to follow the correct means in order to achieve that. And the Sheikh gave the examples of uh, in the implementation of the means to achieve something, even as it regards to, or even in regards to some of the miracles of the prophets. 
even in regards to some of the miracles of the prophets and messengers, that Allah is able to make anything happen simply by saying be and it will happen, it will come into existence. But rather Allah ordered the prophets to implement certain means in order to bring about those certain miracles. So for example, Musa alayhi salam, when he needed the bahar to be split, the sea to be split so that Bani Israel could pass through, Allah didn't simply make it happen. Even though Allah could make it happen, Allah ordered Musa to hit with his staff into the ground and then the water split from there. So Allah made the hitting of Musa with his staff a cause for the sea to split. Likewise, when uh, Musa salam, was ordered to put his hand uh, into his garment and that he would take it out and it would become white and bright to, uh, as a sign for the truthfulness of his message, that Allah didn't simply make his hand like that, but rather he made entering the hand into his uh, clothing, into his garment, a cause for that to happen. Likewise, for uh, Nuh alayhi salam, Allah didn't order, or sorry, Allah didn't uh, create a, an ark or a boat from nothing, but rather Allah ordered Nuh to build his ark, to build his boat for when the floods were coming. So just as the prophets themselves had to implement these means for their miracles to happen, likewise, if the Muslim wants to be upon the truth and wants to be upon clarity, they must implement the correct means and put the effort to learn the proofs, learn the delil from the Quran and authentic Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon the correct understanding of his noble companions. No. If anyone has any question, uh, if you could click the raise hand button. Okay. Uh, Brother Yusuf, Fadal. Assalamu alaikum. Sheikh, uh, I was asking last to last three week, I was asking the question regarding the zakah. Uh, you said that you will check and uh, clarify. What situation husband allowed to take the zakah from wife? That is one thing. And the second thing is uh, 10 years zakah is due. How to calculate? Sorry, I forget uh, to answer your questions. Uh, Insha'Allah, today I will send it to you through Brother Adam. I need to sure. review certain things and I will be back to you, Insha'Allah, today. Okay, no problem. Brother uh, Irshad, Fadal. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, so my question is uh, with regards to what you just mentioned about uh, how Muhammad when he wrote the letter to Herakl and he laid the blame on him for him not accepting, if he does not accept the message of Islam, uh, the blame would be on him for all his people. So were his people blind following in him? Or if in case that was the case, uh, how could Muhammad ask him to accept Islam and then expect the people to accept it when they were simply blind following him, not necessarily following the proofs of any matters? يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كما جاء في الحديث عن نبي هريرة من سمع بي ولم يؤمن بي من اليهود والنصارى فهو في النار هنا ليس الأمر سمع مجرد السماع دون المعرفة والعلم ولذلك قال تعالى وما كنا معذبين 
حتى نبعث رسولا فلا بد من البيان كما قال تعالى لتبين للناس ما نزل إليهم فلا بد من وجود الرسول والبيان الواضح للمكلف فإذا أدرك ذلك فهو مسؤول عن إيمانه لأنه خلق لعبادة الله في الأرض وهو جاء إلى الدنيا ولم يكن له خيار في جل ما في جسمه وعقله فهو مكلف فالجواب أن هرقل إذا منع من إيصال الحق فهو مكلف بهذه المسؤولية التي قال عنها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بأن الوزر سيقع عليه في ميزان الله وإن هم أدركوا الحق وامتنعوا عنه استحقوا العقاب فلذلك من لم يسمع بالدين والبيان الواضح للحق كان كأهل الفترة كان كأهل الفترة فليس هناك عقاب إلا ببيان ورسول مبين للحق كما قال تعالى وما كنا معذبين أي لا نعذب إلا من تحققت له المعرفة بالرسالة نعم <تصفيق> Uh, so as as an introduction to this uh, as an uh, this specific question we know that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the authentic hadith from abu huraira radiyallahu anhu that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that uh, which means that any uh, yahudi or nasrani that has heard of me and doesn't believe in me then he will be in the hellfire. But this, uh, what the Prophet ﷺ said about hearing about me, this does not mean only hearing of him, but rather it encompasses the understanding of his message ﷺ and what he was sent with. And the proof of that is the statement of Allah in which he said, which means, and we do not punish anyone until we send them a messenger. That we do not punish anyone until we have sent them a messenger. And Allah also said, that, and that you may clarify to the people what has been sent down to them. So the responsibility upon an individual is based upon their understanding of the revelation and what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent with. That as is, yeah, as an introduction, as it applies to everyone. Uh, regarding your specific question about Hiraqal, that if Hiraqal was the one that was going to block his people from uh, learning this clarity, learning this truth, then yes, he would be responsible uh, for them not uh, believing because he's blocking it from them. Uh, if the people uh, understood the proofs um, and they understood and they recognized the reason for their existence in this world, that they uh, understand that their responsibility is to worship Allah during this lifetime on the earth and they recognize that they don't have any choice in that matter that just as they were created physically in a certain way that likewise their religion is something which uh, is something legislated by their creator if they understand that correctly and choose not to follow then that's their own responsibility. 
That's their own responsibility and their own blame. No. So what is necessary is that the proofs are established upon the person and the, the, this issue of iqamatul hujjah, there are many aspects of it. And, yeah. and if somebody has not had the proofs established uh, correctly in a way that they clearly understand, then they are from the ahlul fatra. And these are the people that the message has not reached them during their lifetime. And Allah had said that he will not punish a people until after uh, the message has come to them in a clear, understood way. And those people will be tested in a way that Allah chooses on the day of resurrection, as has come in the authentic proofs. And Allah is the most just in regards to his rulings upon his slaves. No. Is, it, is it clear, brother? Yeah. Okay. As I understand, it was him who was impeding them getting to know and learn about Islam and Muhammad's message and not the other way around where I was thinking that he is not accepting it. That's why his people are not accepting it. So if the proofs come to them and they still want to follow Hiracle, even though they've understood the proofs, then the blame is upon them. And if they haven't understood the proofs, they haven't understood the message, then the blame is not upon them. Understood. Okay. Yeah. Wait. Any other questions, brothers? Okay. Jazakum Allah khairan. Inshallah, we'll plan to continue next week.